you're faced with the task of creating this model. You have the two end and you need to connect them with lofts. Now I want to show you two methods, a traditional method using rails and then a not so traditional method using map points. Let's get started. So we're starting with the rings on the top, rings on the bottom. I'm going to turn off one set of them to make it easier to uh, work with. Okay, so this one's going to map to this. I'm going to use rails the first method, which is kind of traditional. So we're going to do a new sketch. I'm going to do it on this plane. It's going to be a 3D sketch, so it really doesn't make any difference. I'll turn on 3D sketch from my sketch palette. I'll use the spline. I'll be going from this point, mapping to this point. Start my new line. Keep on mapping around, going alternating corners. I got one I can't see, so I'll tip it up and get that one. And again, I just continue to move around. So at this time, I'm finished my splines. I would like to line them up with the edges. The best way to do this is to use a collinear constraint between the handle and the edge, and it matches up perfectly. You could maybe use vertical and horizontal, but quite frankly, they're, not, they're a little tedious, and this works every time. Collinear does work very nicely for this process. A couple more and we'll be done with this. Now the next thing you want to do is make sure all your handles are the same length. I'm going to dimension this one at a half inch. And then I'm going to match up all the rest to it with an equal constraint. So we have consistent handles on all corners. Couple more and we're all done. Okay, so all the handles are the same length and they're collinear to their respected edges. Finish my sketch and I'll go to loft. No problem to do this with rails. You've done it probably a hundred times. So I'll pick that face and this face. Pick on my rails. One doesn't matter the order. I'm going to make these tangent beginning and tangent end, and I'll say OK. So I have my twist or my loft. Looks very nice. That is traditional method of using rails. Now let's switch and use a different method. OK, I'll turn my other two bodies back on, and now I'm going to go between these with a loft also, but I'm going to use map points. This is not applicable for all loss, but it will work with this one very nicely. So we'll go, I'm going to go to hum to get my bearings. I'm going around the bottom counterclockwise. So I'll go to loft and pick on my faces again. This time, instead of drawing rails, we'll be doing map points. Now zoom up on the bottom one and you'll notice these corner points can be, you can grab them and slide them. You don't want to go all the way because this point hadn't been moved. You're going to go around it twice. So just go in succession part way. Don't go to the corner. And you're mapping these points to different corners. I'm not going to the end because that hasn't been moved yet. But now I'm getting to the point where I'm, I'm finishing up so I can go all the way. Continue around to finish up your mapping points to the exact corner where we stopped on our first round. One more and I'm all done. Now we'll go to tangent and tangent again and say okay we have the same wonderful spiral. Using a much quicker method called map points. I must emphasize this does not work with all types of lofts. It works well with two planar lofts or lofts that are very close to being planar to each other, but working with three or more is very difficult with this method. But it works great on two. 
I hope this helps you do better modeling in Fusion 360.